Live from the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's time for Box Office Breakdown, where all the weekend numbers get crunched up, analyzed, and spit back in your face. And now, here's your host, the diabolical Finstock, and every man's hero, J-T-E. Wait, are we live? We're going? Wait, Finstock's... Okay, guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the brand new show on the Schmozno Network, Box Office Breakdown. I'm supposed to be here with Bobby Finstock. He's the host. He's not here. So this is going to be really awkward, and I hope you guys can stay with me on this. Basically, on this show, we're going to break down numbers. We're going to give you our in-depth, or I'll be giving my in-depth view on the films and what the numbers mean for the film. Uh, so I guess I'm just going to go over these. Uh, this is going to be a really short episode. All right, let's get into this. Um... Top five films at the box office from this weekend. Oh boy, this is a way to start off a show. All right, um, let's get into this. Number five was uh, November. Nope, that's not it. Okay, my paperwork does not seem right. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. Let's try this again. Okay, I really need. Where is Bobby Fenstock? He was supposed to bring papers, guys. This is not my fault. I promise you this is not my fault. Oh, my God. Hold on. I am, He's not answering his phone. I was trying to find him all weekend, and I couldn't find him. Like, literally, was just running around like, where's Bobby Finstock? Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, nope. Yeah, he hasn't tweeted. You know, he has tweeted. He's tweeted, but he tweets, but he doesn't answer my texts. He doesn't answer my emails. He doesn't answer my phone calls. I don't understand this. Ah. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry, okay. The IRS is Look breathing down my neck like it's some kind of personal <laughs> vendetta against Bobby Finstock. Oh, thank God. Bobby Finstock, no. It's Bobby Finstock, no. It's well. Bobby Finstock, no. You're all right. Well. <laughs> what are you doing, the man? The IRS is breathing down my neck. Bobby Finstock, no. Welcome to the show, Bobby. Well, oh, somebody cancel uh, the box office uh, breakdown for every other show imaginable but this one. Uh, first of all, you're stressing me out. All weekend, I can't find you. I w- well, I was in Honduras. My buddy, uh, he owns a, a textile plant over there. We're trying to make Honduras into the new China. Okay, well, I don't even... You, I started off my first show. This is the first time, everybody, I've hosted a show. This is the first time I'm outside the booth, and you leave me out to dry out here right from the get-go. Well, I mean, it's, there's a lot of traffic outside, too. It's, it's, it's a lot of stuff going outside. It's really hot. All right. I but let's, uh, get, let's get this going. Let's get this going. Yeah, let's get this going. Uh, all right, guys. So, like I said before, this is the box office breakdown. Bobby Finstock's box office breakdown. Yes. I'm here to co-host with you. We are going to break down the numbers of the weekend box office, give you our ideas, you know, what these numbers mean. We really want this to be like a formative show to give you an idea, like, how, how the Hollywood works in a way when it comes to money. Absolutely. It's changed a lot throughout the years. Like, movies are not in, they're not in theaters as long as they used to be. A movie used to have a year almost. I mean, Jaws was in theaters for a year. Well, they make, I mean, they, they want to put it on DVD just as quick as possible. Yeah, exactly. It makes a ton of money. Then they'll re-release it the next year in like IMAX or, D, or, or 3D and they'll get more money. These I, fat cats. I remember waiting like, and this is a bad movie, and I was a kid. Godzilla was in theaters. I'm talking about the Matthew Broderick one. Yeah, it's a bad movie. I liked it. Mm. It took almost a year for that to come out on VHS. And I remember just like, I couldn't wait for it to come out on VHS because I was stupid. I liked the movie as a kid. Yeah, it's the same thing with like, uh, you know, PlayStation games and all that. Yeah. You, you, you never know. Nowadays with VOD and DVDs, literally you wait three months, it hits DVD. Absolutely. All right, Bobby, I'm so glad we're here. We can finally break down this top five. Uh, this is September, is known as kind of a garbage month for. For yeah. movies, it's kind of like January, February. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. it's 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 trash weekend. It is trash, trash month weekend. actually. I was born in September, but other than that, it's not really that good. <laughs> okay, that says a lot. Um, all right, so let's break out the top five. Uh, the one movie, I think. Let's first of all, the last few weeks, is, it's basically been Guardians. Correct. And I think that goes to show you, Marvel's very smart. They release these movies like same thing with Captain America. They release it in April. Yes, it gives it some room. You're not coming up against X Men. You're not coming up against Transformers. It gives them time to make their money. And I think with Guardians, they did another smart thing. They released it right in the begin, right at the end of August, or was the beginning of August. But yeah, again, August is kind of the beginning of the the decline of summer movies. Right. I mean, look, if Edge of Tomorrow, which is a really good movie, yeah, was released around this same time, it would have made a hell of a lot more money. Probably a doubled it. 
but they wanted to release it against the big dogs, and, and you know, they, <laughs> yeah, they took a shit. Yeah, imagine if they released that in January. Yeah. It would have made I mean, so much more money. Tom Cruise was probably like, no way, I'm not a January guy. All right, guys, let's get into the numbers. Uh, let's start with number five. As the Pierce Brosnan film, The November Man, it pulled in only $4.2 million in its second weekend. Now, this is based on a book series. It's kind of like, you know, I think they were banking on, hey, he's in a James Bond type role. Sure, or Thomas Crown, like, kind of vibe. Exactly. It's made $17 million in two weeks. That's not very good numbers. No, not for the budget. Not for the budget. And the budget was, oof. Oh, the budget, I'm sorry. The budget was $17 million. So far, it has made... Oh, the budget. Mm, well, what happens? It's about seventeen million. It's only made. Well, it's about... getting a good word of mouth because the first week it opened, it was like two million something, and now oh, it's four. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! It yeah. actually went up. That's why we didn't get it, and uh, we didn't predict it in the top five. And also, like we said earlier, the movies really are kind of crap right now. Mm -hmm. And I think something that's even lower level, it's going to get a little more hits than it usually would. Of course. Um, did you see this movie? Let me ask you that first. The November Man. Yeah. No, I was watching reruns of the 1977 World Series with Mr. October. Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not even in November yet. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I didn't see it either. I mean, listen, for me to go see a movie, it really has to be something I'm really interested in. This is something like I would catch on Netflix. And if I, yes. and that's if there's nothing else I want to watch. So Correct. Let's, let's skip that one. Here's a, here, Number four has kind of been a surprise. Uh, and again, I think this is because it came out in August. Let's be cops. You know, once again, the marketing on this, it was perfect. It was released at the right time. You released this in the in midsummer this movie does seven million out the gate tops out of the theaters about 30. you put this right where it's at not too many comedies this is gonna do 75 million dollars in the box office and that's gangbusters for something like this you might see let's be cops too it is and they it's play like transsexuals or something like that <laughs> again it's a low budget film so far it's made 66 million dollars that's well, insane well luke greenfield's a really good director you know he did uh the girl next door that's right. I like that one. That with, a, uh, he's very good Camille at this. Hirsch. He's very good Without at this genre. Star. He did a rom com <laughs> called Something Borrowed, which was horrible, but that wasn't his fault. But this is back to his genre. He wrote that. He co wrote it, I think, with his partner. And uh, good for him. He's a the, good guy. The interesting about this movie, there's no big stars. No, they went, you know, the young Wayans and the other guy from New Girl. Yeah, and, they're uh, both on New Girl right now, actually. And I like that, though. I mean, it's better off. I mean, look, you got 22 Jump Street with uh, Hill and, and yep. Chan and Tatum. Which Obviously, oh my God, it's a great movie. It's, yeah. it's in people's top fives. But, you know, you get something like this, you know, why? I don't understand. Like, I think more movies need to have these kind of like sort of TV, no name celebrities to come in there. And this is very good for movies and very good for young actors that, you know, you could prove that you could. Uh, do pretty well in the box office. Yeah, for me, I think the concept in the trailer is really what sold this movie. I saw it, and I'm gonna say on record, I didn't like the movie very much. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot of the jokes were hit and miss, but I mean, <laughs> I love the idea. I was like, I, when I saw the trailer, I was like, I wanna like call Ken or <laughs> Bobby Finstock uh, and be like, let's uh, go out there and do a freaking, let's be cops. Uh, of course, I mean, it's 16, 17 year old kids go see this movie. It's not like, you know, 40-year-old dudes are going to check this out. Yeah, I'm surprised mm -hmm. no one's, like, tried, like, a YouTube video like this. Uh, you catch a breast one every once in a while, make people happy. <laughs> exactly. right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, next one, If I Stay, which is the Chloe Moretz film. Uh, the does she, she doesn't get naked in it, does she? <laughs> no. I mean, she's underage, my bad. She's, but anyway, yeah, I think she, her she's going to... She's, she's gonna young. do. She's gonna do good movies when she gets uh, a little older, and she's ready. <laughs> it's gonna be like it's. It's like when Alyssa Milano did the Kiss of the Vampire. Oh, Embrace of the Vampire. Embrace of the Vampire. Tony Danza, like, <laughs> uh, you know, denounced her from his like family no, after that. Yeah, really? Yeah, he didn't like what she. She was only doing. did one movie. And that was yeah. That was the one. I mean, that happens too. You know, Heather Graham of Boogie Nights. Her mm -hmm. parents were very religious, and they like disowned her after she was Roller Girl. It happens. I mean, look, Tony Danza was like, you know, he has a lot of powers and. Uh, you know, uh, the he's a very influential in the movie making uh, industry. Little do you know, you know. So when Tony says, "Alyssa, you're not in movies anymore," all the powers that be listen. And let me say, this movie. I saw the trailer. I found it kind of corny. I, I'm not sure if this one's based on a book. Also, uh, the numbers. It's doing pretty good. It made 39 million. Again, this is a low budget film. Not a huge. No, I wouldn't call Chloe Moretz a big star yet. Uh, no, not yet. She's she's popular with the Tiger Beat fan base. Well, she's got to get to 18 before she gives him a big star. <laughs> okay, if you say so. I, I liked her in um, Let Me In. I liked her in uh, Kick-Ass. She I was good in Hugo. She was good in Hugo. Hugo, yes, like Scorsese. Um, this movie, it reminded me of that movie, uh, Hayden Christensen from the Star Wars movies, which is basically the only thing anyone knows him from. Yeah. He did this movie where he goes under and he has like an outer body experience. A jumper. 
No, it was called, uh, I can't remember the title. Someone out there probably comment below. You probably know what I'm talking about. He gets put under it when he goes for surgery and he has like this outer body experience mm -hmm. and he learns like someone's trying to kill him. This movie kind of reminded me of that because basically she's having an outer body experience. She's okay. like in limbo. What, has she got cancer or something like that? No, I think she's in the car accident. Oh, uh, okay. And she has to decide whether she wants to live and be with her boyfriend uh, or pass on to the Oh, uh, the light. Life. Yeah, like go see the light or... Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. It's like Poltergeist stuff. <laughs> Poltergeist. Yeah. Oh, my God. They had the lady from Poltergeist in the trailer? I, I would have gone and seen that. Oh, yeah. She's box she's office still alive? gold. Uh, no, I think she died the other day. Oh, geez. She's box office gold. <laughs> box office gold. She was also in Teen Witch. Yeah. You remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, movie. let's get to the top two. Uh, not a big surprise here. Two of the big budget films from the summer that are still kind of lingering because there's nothing else to compete with them. Correct. Number two is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It made $6.5 million. This thing has made almost $175 million so far. <laughs> Listen. I'd call it a disappointment, though. Yeah. I guess... This, as, are you saying number wise or are you yeah, saying as far number as the wise, movie? number wise okay did you see the movie no I wouldn't watch that <laughs> I never even watched anything I don't even eat pizza anymore are you, are you a fan of the turtles growing up no I hate the turtles I was a G.I. Joe guy G. I and G. I hate those movies too so I'm definitely not seeing those uh, I, I saw this movie I enjoyed it more than I will say I enjoyed it more than I thought it was but even though I was saying that it's not a good movie yeah no I, I can imagine it's a, the script is a mess i do is think it pg they, it's pg-13 i believe no. it has to be pg-13 because it's like fairly violent at times is what's her name scandally clad as april or no no but she wears a lot of really tight pants oh. but you know they i do like that <laughs> yeah there's actually a shot in the movie of her just bending over out of a car uh -huh. and will arnett just kind of gives like one of those classic double takes oh i wonder if they used a uh because she's really skinny i yeah. wonder if they use a uh, ass double that's a good question yeah and they usually they let the actress pick out the ass. The ass double. <laughs> I'd love to be in the room. Like, yeah. as a director, I'd be like, I need to be in the room to make sure you pick the right Well, asterisk. Shakira does the ass doubling for like 95% of movies in Hollywood. Are you serious? Yeah. She does have a great ass. Yeah. That, she does. That, you know, it's insane. That's true, but it makes sense. It's true. People can look it up. So, again, number two, Turtles. I don't think it's going anywhere. The kids, I mean, I said this when I saw the movie. If I was 13 years old and I saw this movie, I would love it. You might see a number two a uh, couple of years down the road. Oh, they already announced the number two. Ugh. It's coming. True. It's in November. While we're on that subject, well, you know. let's go back to number five. November Man has already got a sequel greenlit, even though it's not even doing that good. I think it maybe it's doing good international. What's it going to be called? The December Man? <laughs> December Man. I, I hope to God that's what it's called. It might be. Uh, let's get to number one film. Uh, no surprise here. We're talking about it a little bit earlier. It's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. This thing's a juggernaut. This thing's a juggernaut. I mean, it's the first Marvel film that looks like it's going to be four weeks in a row. Well, not in a row, but four weeks Right. to hit number one while during release. I don't think Avengers even did that. I mean, the key to movies that make over 250 in the box office is you get these people to see it four, five, six, seven times. Yeah. There's people who actually seen this probably in the double digits. I don't oh. know who has the money to do that, but... I'm reading... I mean, I do, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm reading fans in Schmoville. Some people saying they've seen it like up to five times. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe you can't get enough of the little raccoon or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't particularly like like animals with like AK-47s and stuff like that. <laughs> Did Except you say, like wait, Planet of the Apes. That was good. Everyone in America has basically seen this movie. Have you seen it? No, I, re I refuse to watch movies with when humans interact with live action animals, except for Dolphin Tail, obviously. With live action? You mean CGI animals? Yeah, CGI animals. <laughs> so anytime a human is like, wait, did you see Avatar? That whole thing's CG. No, I didn't see Avatar. You didn't see Avatar? I refuse to see that. Well, because uh, the 3D and uh, the IMAX throws off my equilibrium. It does. <laughs> so it's like if I watch it and I go into like a three-day tailspin. I see. That's true. Yeah. I've heard about that before. Yeah. I never met anybody with that. Yeah, I don't have I don't get seizures or anything like that, but like like bad stuff happens. I walk in the doors and stuff. It's All right, good. well, it made ten million this weekend. So far it's made two hundred and ninety four million dollars. And that's just domestic. It's gonna it's probably gonna make five, six hundred million dollars worldwide. It's, Everybody's gonna It's close to topping Iron Man three for worldwide, I believe. I would say about seven million of this ten million it made this week mm -hmm. is repeat viewers. It's, it's at this point I feel like it's got to be I think people I think it's that and also people going to the theater not everyone runs out to the theater opening weekend no I think even though it's been six weeks people who don't go to movies that often they, they see there's really nothing playing and they hear about Guardians on TV it's Absolutely. number one every week it's on the news every week They're like alright let's it's, go uh, see it's become to the point where it's, it's an event it's American propaganda at it's finest <laughs> propaganda yeah yeah Marvel Marvel American propaganda. propaganda yeah propaganda <laughs> 
Uh, so that's your top five. Uh, number one, Guardians. Number two, Turtles. Number three, If I Stay. Number four, Let's Be Cops. Number five, November Man. The rest of the list is nothing too shocking. Uh, as a, as above, so below. Uh, it's no longer in the top five. Horror no. movies usually only do good their first weekend. Yeah. Uh, the Game Stands Tall, the football movie. It's only been nah. released. They tried to they tried to duplicate the blind side. It didn't work. Yeah. And it, there was, it was a very, you know, it was a very religious film in a lot of ways as far as when it comes to its themes. Right. Another film that's kind of like that is The Giver. Yeah. Uh, that's only been out for like five weeks, four or five weeks, and it's made $37 million, so not much money for that film. No. And yeah, number 10, rocking it out, is Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great movie. Scott Johansson. And that's a good transition uh, right into, yes. let's go to international box office a little bit. I'm a big fan of international box office. And the top film was Lucy in foreign box office. It's doing gangbusters. It made $25 million. That's a uh, ton of money. It's earned 192 overseas so far. $192 million. The crazy part about it is, I mean, she doesn't even really get naked in it. <laughs> no, she doesn't. I mean, I she think... does those modeling walks where everything bounces, but, and that's sometimes good. You're but... thinking of uh, Under the Skin. Oh, yeah. She gets naked in that one. Oh, boy. That's a good movie. <laughs> For a movie called Under the Skin, we get to see a lot of skin. She just had a baby. Yeah, that's true. Is she some that dude? I, th I don't know what. I don't know if she's in love with that dude. I think she had. A, I think the baby's like Tom Cruise's or Sean Penn's, and that guy's just like a stand-in. I'm not really sure. She's she like French or something. She date Tom Cruise? Nah, she probably just wants a <laughs> baby to look like him. He's just impregnated her. Yeah, I got that. Um, so yeah, so Lucy was the top film. Also doing really good is Hercules, the, which did not do very good in America. No, but. They and just had one out like three weeks ago before this one. <laughs> yeah, the really bad one with uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Lutz. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's his name. He's the guy, be on steroids. He was in okay. Expendables, which he wasn't very good in Expendables. He wasn't very good in Hercules. Uh, again, but I think, I'm curious. Do you think the reason why Lucy is topping international is because of films like Captain America 3 and the Avengers? They relate her to like this action hero. So they're like, part he, of them just want to see Black Widow. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, they do that all the time. I mean, look, you know, when Teen Wolf, uh, when Back to the Future came out, uh, in the American box office, mm -hmm. uh, then Teen Wolf came out afterwards. The overseas marketing was uh, trying to capitalize on the Back to the Future, you know, uh, I guess brand, mm -hmm. and we're calling Teen Wolf the boy from outer space. Wow. You know, the wolf from outer space. So they're like sitting there saying like, oh, let's see how we can capitalize. And foreign uh, movies do that all the time. Like Hercules yeah. is probably called like the rock over there or something like that who knows <laughs> rockleys yeah exactly <laughs> it's the rockleys they can do anything they want yeah so international rounding out dawn of the planet of the apes took in 16.6 .6, did really good in china oh of course it's pulled in 435 million so far so that movie is a huge it's hit. called dawn of the panda bear in china actually <laughs> dawn of the panda bear yeah now i think they'd be a little upset when they don't see too many pandas in there they don't they don't care <laughs> they don't care anymore <laughs> I understand. China could basically tell people to just go see the movie. The, China says it's well, pandas. the smog over there is is, is breathtaking. And <laughs> does that affect their eyesight? Yeah, they, they just can't see even the, see the movie. <laughs> they see furry animals. They yeah. just assume. Oh, okay. And you could smoke pandas. in the theaters and stuff. It's weird. Can you really smoke in the theaters over there? Yeah, like, well, you can do anything in China. <laughs> they're probably like cooking duck in like the rows as yeah, they're watching the movie. <laughs> big time plastic. It's oh, plastic man. oriented. And. Uh, Besides that, Guardians Galaxy is also kicking ass over there. Of course uh, it pulled is. in eleven point five million. It's up to two hundred ninety one uh, worldwide. Worldwide, it's five hundred eighty six. So it's it, won't, it won't do a billion. It won't. No, I don't think it'll do a billion either. That's that's where that's one thing it will not catch up when it comes to Avengers. It's not going to catch it there. Correct. Uh, all right. Well, that was the top five in international. Uh, let me give a shout out to Box Office Mojo. There's, that's where we go for all these numbers. I've been following Box Office Mojo for as long as I can remember. Oh, yeah. It they're is, the best. It's a place I go to every Sunday. Uh, every You know what I like to do when I watch a movie and I'm like really enjoying it, especially if it's an older film from the 90s? I want to know if this movie was successful. So sometimes I'll pull out my phone, mm -hmm. I'll jump on Box Office Mojo, and I'll just be like, I really like this movie. I wonder if it did good. It's almost like I want to know that it did good to make myself feel I, good about the movie. I do it a lot to look at, up locations uh, where they shot that, you know, and... Uh, just a numerous other things that I do on there. Like I play Hangman. I play a bunch of games they have on there. And I just get a lot of my facts off there as well. Yeah, it's great. I love Box Office Mojo. I've been using it for as long as I can remember. Yeah, years. Uh, so let's get to predictions. Uh, there's only really two big films coming out this well, we, Friday. Well, we tied last week. Oh, that's right. And yes. the Box Office Breakdown, we tied. Our uh, faithful associate producer of the Schmoes No podcast, uh, Copster, does a, he does like a basically a little video version of our show, which is basically just breaks down the top five films. And this past week, he interviewed us. He wanted to know what we thought was going to be the top five. 
because he wanted to see who's, you know, a little bit of a competition. Here in Schmoville, we like to be competitive. Right. And he asked us our top five. We both gave our answers. We both got three out of three. So we tied. Yes, we did. Uh, I, I think you put If I Stay at like a different number than I did, but I we did. both had the first top two. We had Turtles and Guardians. Yes. And I think what we should do now is, I don't like ending on a tie. I don't know about you. No, ties are for... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Soccer. International <laughs> soccer. And, exactly. Yeah. This is America. We don't like ties C- in cricket. America. Cricket, they ended ties. If there was a football game and it ended a tie, I think there would be a riot in the stadium. Yeah, people would die. <laughs> yeah, people would die. So let's give... All right, so real quick, let's give our predictions. Now, just a reminder, the two films that are really going to do any damage mm-hmm. is Dolphin Tale 2. Bingo. And No Good Deed. Gotcha. Let me talk about those two real quick and I'll figure okay. out what it is. You know, Dolphin Tail, you know, you got the paraplegic dolphin mm-hmm. that helps all, you know, that inspires the kids to, like, go to college and become, like, upstanding Americans. Okay. You know, Dolphin Tail 1 opened at $19 million. It would have did a hell of a lot more if Disney didn't release Lion King in 3D. So, we're, I mean, okay. Dolphin Tail's run of $70 million domestically is not bad for a live-action dolphin and some, no. and some pelican rolling around in Morgan, <laughs> Pre- Morgan Freeman's voice. It would have made over 100 if Lion King wasn't there. It's more than I thought it would have done. Yeah, and I think basically this movie is going to do basically the same thing as it did the first one because there's no other family films in uh, the marketplace right now except for if you want to call Guardians of the Galaxy and Ninja Turtles family films. But yeah, this is something inspiring, and I think people need to be inspired now in this day and age. Let me ask you a question. Um, I remember when the first one came out just because I, looked, I thought it looked a little ridiculous. I mean, I don't know, me as a kid, Mm-hmm. I grew up, I was begging my parents to take me to go see Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I wasn't begging to see a movie about a dolphin who gets his, you know, fin fixed. Of course. I don't know if that's just a generational thing. I, well, look, Dolphin Tail's not a joke. You know, <laughs> pulling, mean, pulling a rat out okay. of like a, a rat hole is a joke. Dolphin Tail's a real deal. And it's going to make $100 million in the box office. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Domestically. I was When I heard that you made a second one, I was like, really? They made a sequel to that dolphin? What else is there to tell? He fixed his fin. Well, the dolphins... Unless he joins, like, the military and they're using him in, like, special ops programs. I don't... I'm not interested. Well, the dolphins are in with the... They're in cahoots with the Americans. How... What do you mean? Because the dolphins are the bully of the ocean. But what they do is send lower-level dolphins into aquariums to be nice <laughs> while they wreak havoc on, the, uh, havoc on the humpback whales and the other marine life. So they get that kind of free pass. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, they're bamboozling everybody. So, okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, I like dolphins, I guess. I've never... I have heard they're kind of like the a-holes of the ocean. I'm telling you what they are. <laughs> All right. They're onto it. All right, well, so that's the other film, and the other one is No Good Deed. Would you yeah, it's, it? an, it's, an, it's an urban flick. Yeah, I it's mean, with a... It's Ray Rice's favorite, favorite film. Uh, basically, it's... Look, there hasn't been an urban film in the marketplace since, like, Think Like a Man 100 or whatever, how many times they put that out. Okay. Um... You know, look, Colorado is for lovers and September is for stalkers. So, you know, if this movie can do what Obsessed did, it opened at 28 million with Beyonce and uh, Idris Elba himself. It's virtually the same movie. And Idris Elba is becoming a huge star. Yeah. Can uh, this movie make 20, 28 million dollars? No. Really? You don't think it's going to make 20? No. Are you talking opening weekend? Opening weekend, okay. yes. Um, opening weekend, a movie like this traditionally will probably do 17 to 20. I think this will do a little more than this might do like 22 and maybe eke out dolphin tail by really? like a million or a million five it, it reminds me of seeing the trailer it kind of reminds me of uh the movie when a stranger calls it's basically a lady stuck in her house alone and someone terrorizing yeah, it's, her. it's panic room it's purge it's it's, it's the or, whole thing oh, unlawful entry with unlawful Ray entry love that movie sleeping with enemy yep i don't understand who lets people in their house nowadays like why open the door for anybody i don't even open the door for my family sometimes it, it, you know, it's true. Some people can be too trusting. I had a guy on the metro. I drive the metro very often, Shimoville, and you see some Sadie characters. This guy came up to me, looked like he just got done running from the cops, and he's like, can I borrow your phone, man? Yeah, <laughs> can that's, I borrow your phone? That's the new shtick. And I'm like, sure. And I I did not hand him my phone. I literally put on speaker, and I said, tell me the number, and yeah, I will... But he didn't do it, right? I will stand right here, and he's like... Uh, okay, so he like gave me a number which I don't yeah. think is real. No, it's it's a new shtick that these criminals yeah. are doing. It's, it's not good. Second, I gave my phone that guy would have took off. It's the same thing that these other criminals are doing. Sorry to get off topic real quick, but no, go ahead. it's when you're driving if you and you're in a parking lot uh, and you go into your car, there'll be a post-it note on the back of your window, right? Okay. In the middle of the back of your window. You'll be like, "What the hell is that?" You go off there and they jack you when you when they when you go rip it off. 
Thank so God. if anybody has a post-it note in the middle of their back window, <laughs> just leave it. Just leave it there. Just leave the, Just leave it yeah. there. Where it's words from Bob Finstock. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So no good deed or Dolph Diggler. Let's get into our predictions. Okay. Uh, give me your top five for the week. Um, I think, you know, I'm going to go with no, no good deed. At number one. At number one. Okay. So you think Guardians is going to get knocked off? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not going to do 20 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think no good deeds is about 20 million, maybe 22 tops, depending on the weather in the East Coast. All right, number uh, two. The para- paraplegic dolphin, dolphin tail right. two. Dolphin tail um, two. Maybe 20. Well, we're talking between, I would say, $2 million less than either way. It can go either way. Okay. So three will be Guardians again. Um, four. You know, might be. Unfortunately, probably Ninja Turtles again. Really? Yeah. Okay, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, maybe at like three million, three point mm-hmm. five or something like that. And then, you know, it, it'll probably be. Let's be cops. I think it'll stay in the top it's five. Stay in there. I it's think it'll re- stay in the top it's five. Really, the only comedy. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly why I'm doing it. I understand. I will just be a little, you know, make this a little more of a challenge, and some competition. I will say number one will be Dolphin Tail Two. I think the families. I, I think the families don't want to take their kids to see turtles too much. I'm sure the, the kids want to go see it, but some parents might not be want to yeah. bring their little kids to see turtles. It's kind of those turtles are kind of scary, by the way. <laughs> they don't look like your friendly turtles. Well, they got machetes and. And Guardians, listen, Guardians is not really a family film. Some of the jokes in that movie is definitely adult in some situations. I think the audience for the family is really starving for like a family film, and it's got Morgan Freeman. You got dolphins. You got pelicans walking around. Yeah, there's a couple of dolphins in there. You got Harry Connick Jr. He sings like a song at the end. <laughs> Harry Connick Ashley Jr. Judd's there. And oh man, really? Wow. Yeah. There's like special appearances by Chris Christopherson. <laughs> He's the best. This movie is like this is like a movie I would rent with my friends just to make fun of. I feel like. Yeah, you could do a drinking game of how many times like they talk about the dolphin's tail or it falls off or whatever. Uh, besides that, I think I'm going to go just like you. I'm going to say number three is Guardians, number mm-hmm. four Turtles, and number five Let's Be Cops. So the only difference I think is you. Yeah, and I think you might have a you, hey, look. You know, from what my people are telling me, Dolphin Tail is uh, it's neck and neck with uh, No Good Deed right now. So yeah. it's going to be a flip flop. It, and it's two totally different audiences. It all depends which yes. audience comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's not, let's not, you know, we gloss this over a little bit. I think one reason why this weekend was actually one of the lowest weekends in the history of the box office. Oh, yeah. And I think the reason for that is one, football started. Yes. And two, there's really not much else to see. Well, September, you know, everybody's, uh, they go, there's back to school shopping, you know, uh, there's, uh, it's just the weather changes. People get depressed because they, you know, they know it's gonna, it's not gonna be hot anymore across the globe. Um, <laughs> the globe. Yeah, there's a top, there's a, a couple of different aspects. Okay. September's not everybody's favorite month. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. There's um, allergies. Allergies start running rampant. They wreak havoc. Uh, now, usually, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Dolphin. I'm still thinking about dolphin tail too. The trailer is so ridiculous at times. There's a scene where there's like a literally, <laughs> what kind of bird is it? Oh, it's a pelican. It's a pelican walking down like an aisle. The pelican and all, brief. All these families are all looking happy and like, oh, how cute. I just see, you know, kind of an animal I wouldn't want to get near. Oh, pelicans are dangerous. Birds are like, have more diseases than any other a animal. A pelican will swallow a, ba- swallow a baby quicker than a snake. <laughs> Is there is there a record of a pelican ever swooping up and grabbing a baby? I guarantee you Google it. There's definitely a pelican. Oh, He's definitely God. killed a human before. <laughs> Maybe with bird flu or something. Who knows? Right. You never know with those guys. Uh, let's get to our fact stock of the week. Oh, yeah. This is our little thing called the fact stock. It's a little, stock. little uh, thing we're going to do here where, listen, this man is a well of knowledge. Ah, it's just a and I, cesspool we, we, of knowledge. We need to just tap the surface here. Uh, what's your fact stock for the week, Finstock? Well, we all know September, you know, nobody really goes to see anything. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a movie dump. It's a cash grab. I mean, that's what, that's what kind of month it is. Um, the highest opening weekend ever in a September is by a movie called Hotel Transylvania. It made $42 million in oh, 2012. The Sandler film. Uh, yes. Did he voice like Dracula now? Yes, exactly. That's the highest grossing film in September? Yep. Of all time. Wow, that's 42 a mi- And that's by like a lot. I think like Sweet Home Alabama was like second with like 35 or something. Wow, that, that really just kind of says a lot about how bad September oh, yeah. could be. And it also tells you something... I think that helps my case for Dolphin Tale too. 
Yeah. That was a family film. Oh, absolutely. People are looking for those family films. Absolutely. Right now. They could do gangbusters. We'll see. But September, like I said, you know, I don't understand why these studio executives don't don't throw a bigger movie out in September. Why not? You know why? Because it's a it's a penis growing contest, and they don't they, you know they don't want to be the it's a, it's not the major leagues. September's not the major leagues. Yeah, it's it's everyone's it's it's the preseason of football. Right, exactly. <laughs> for movies, they're exactly. all getting they're getting ready for their heavy hitters. You know, the studios are getting their Oscar contenders ready. They're getting their press ready. And Ex- exactly. They ain't got no out. time for these things. You're 100 percent right. But that's the fact. Wow. And there'll be once a week there'll be a, a fact that's pretty yeah. interesting. I mean, Sandler already kind of has a hold on the family box office <sighs> yeah <laughs> which you know for better or worse the retarded family box office <laughs> so when you get a kids animated film and sailor together it's pretty much a perfect recipe for a hit right all right let's uh for basically every week what we're gonna do is we're gonna relate the number one film of the week to a certain top five list uh this week was guardians of the galaxy so we want to k- stick with like science fiction correct because honestly science fiction and i'm not talking Guardians, when I first see Guardians, you think Marvel, you think comic books. Sure. And apparently comic, book, comic books are a part of science fiction. Oh, yeah. I almost feel like it's should have... Graphic novels is, I mean, Star Trek and all these other things were all comic books as well. I know. I almost feel like there should be like a separate category for comic books and science fiction because it's yeah. such a genre now. Oh, yeah. It's bigger than anything. It's like hip-hop music in the 80s it didn't have a genre and they just like, oh, let's call it something. Well, let's call it rap. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's funny how there's a rap and there's like a hip-hop category sometimes. Right. And there was grunge rock and all these other things. Yeah. You know? Uh, so let's do... Let's let's give some little info here. The top five grossing science fiction movies of all time. Yep. So these are the movies that are considered science fiction and have grossed the most amount of money. Correct. Uh, we'll start with number five, which is actually pretty recent, Catching Fire. Yeah. Yeah, it Hunger hit big. Games. It hit real big. Hit real big. And, and now I think the next one's going to be even bigger because after those Jennifer Lawrence pictures, I mean, people <laughs> are going to be like, wow, I got to see, I got to see this. Yeah. You know, I don't want to really get into those pictures, but... Yeah, we don't, I don't want to talk about that. I like either. to leave some... It was an invasion of privacy, yeah. and it was totally wrong on every single level, and the guy who did it's a complete idiot. It's probably well in China. Or he's like a, probably one of those guys sitting behind the booth or whatever. We got your back, Jennifer. Somewhere. Yeah, we do. Open invitation to come on the show Kate whenever Upton. you want. Although, you know, Justin Verlander's my new idol. Other than that, go ahead. Okay, so it made $425 million. I definitely agree that's a sci-fi film. Number four, the original Star Wars, $461 million. Ken Knapsack will be happy about that. Yeah. That, uh, that is, I mean, that's the, that's the best sci-fi film of all time, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion. And mm-hmm. if you don't like Star Wars, you maybe shouldn't even be on this planet. To be honest with you, if you don't see it and if you don't take your kids to see it or somebody needs to see that. number And on all the movies on this list, it's the one that really harkens back to Guardians. Guardians feels like a Star Wars for kind of a new generation. Well, it's a team coming together. I mean, it's the best team assembled ever since, you know, Lou Brown uh, assembled the Cleveland Indians for Major League. (laughs) Major League, that's a great movie. Yeah, that's the best team building Uh, show. Number three is another Star Wars film, but on the totally different end of the spectrum. The Phantom Menace with four hundred seventy-five million dollars. Oh wow! It makes sense because listen, when that movie came out, everyone was losing their mind. They could not. Everyone was so ready for a new Star Wars movie. Yeah. I think it probably made half this money on its like first week. Well, as good as the original Star Wars was, was as bad as Phantom Menace was. What a piece of shit! I totally agree. Holy Jesus Christ! Uh, number two with four. I'm sorry, six hundred twenty-three million dollars. The Avengers. You know, it's a fun movie. And this is this is where I'm kind of saying, like, yeah, it's a... I see it... I think of it as a comic book movie. When I saw this on the list, it didn't jump out as a science fiction movie, but there's wormholes in space. There's you, aliens coming your down. Your point is amazing. This is not a science fiction movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's a superhero comic book movie. It's a superhero comic book movie. Yes, they, like, go into space or something for, like, a second or they're flying around in space, yeah. right? But, I mean, maybe it, that's to... I don't know, solidify the genre. I'm not really sure. Again, I think comic book movies... Hulk's are... not from outer space. <laughs> no, His, the gamma rays ain't from outer space. True. Um, Captain America is American. Number one is not surprising, uh, if you really thought about this, with $761 million, uh, almost, almost $100 million more than anything, more than $100 million than any of these other movies, is Avatar. James Cameron, I mean, what's, Look, what can you say? The movie is beautiful. It's beautifully shot. Wait, I thought you, you have not seen this movie. Have no, no, no. I've seen like trailers and stuff okay, like that. Okay, okay. It's beautifully shot. It's beautifully shot. Okay. But it's like a simple story. I mean, it's like it a is. story it's out of like a, a child, a child's book. It stands with wolves, basically. It's pretty or, or Pocahontas, either one. And here's the problem: they're going to do two and three and four, and who knows, whatever. Sometimes I think movies get a reputation where they become more of an event than they are a movie. Yeah. Uh, this movie, every news coverage, everything from CNN to 
Entertainment Weekly was covering this thing 24-7. American propaganda. <laughs> American propaganda. It's almost like if you didn't see this movie, there was like something wrong with you. And then you get to buy, the, you know, then the Chinese start buying into it and then everybody buys into it. And next thing you know, it's like a billion dollar movie. My parents don't go to the movies maybe about once every two years. They saw Avatar. Ugh. When my parents call me and tell me they saw a movie and they saw Avengers, mm-hmm. that's when I know this movie's going to be a billion dollar. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so my parents are going to go see it. Everyone's seeing when it. When I see a movie, it cracks the $500 million uh, mark usually. If it's, like a, if it's like a big budget movie, if a movie does five hundred million, you can guarantee I've seen it. We should have jobs at Box Office Mojo. Like, well, maybe eventually. It should be like a red phone where I just pick it up. Be like, my parents went and saw Avatar. It's well, I worked. Hit, I worked in. The, I worked in the fact room of uh, IMDb for a little while. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh wow. I got fired though. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, all right, well, we're pretty much at the end of our show here, Bobby. Um, yeah. Real quick, I want to go over because it is the end of the summer. Yeah. I would love to go over the top grossing films of the summer, real quick. Number one, no surprise, Guardians of, Well, it is a surprise, actually. Guardians of the Galaxy was the kind of film no one really had picked as number one film, but it was number one film with $294 million right now, just surpassing the number two film, Transformers Age of Extinction. Oh, man. Which, I'm just happy, I'm, tr- I'm just happy Transformers didn't win. Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, Transformers is what it is. People are still going to go see it. No matter who does it, no matter who makes it. Listen, I saw They it. love the GoBots or whatever it is, the Omnibots or whatever the yeah. hell they're called. It is what it is, I guess. Listen, the movies look good, and that's what gets people in the theater. Yeah. Uh, number three, a little surprising, Maleficent with 239. I think that was the family film of the year. You got Angelina Jolie pulling in the old, older audience. I saw it because of Angelina Jolie. That movie made... I'm not going to lie. That, made, that movie made almost $500 million overseas. Oh, really? O- yeah. Worldwide. Yeah, it's... It's unbelievable, the appeal she has. I didn't even know who Maleficent was. <laughs> I don't even know who the hell that is. And then, you know, she's dressed as a witch, yada, yada, yada. I thought it was... Yeah. The, but that's that's amazing that it's going to probably do a billion dollars with DVD and everything like that's sick. It's it's insane. Angelina Jolie, you know, she never really had a huge box office hit like that. Yeah, she so. just that just makes give us her more money to adopt like <laughs> more kids from wherever the hell she's adopting them from. <laughs> Good for her. Uh, number four, my favorite film of the summer was X Men: Days of Future Past with two hundred thirty three. Hmm. Really happy to see this because I was a big fan of this film. I just loved it. Yeah. And topping off number five, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes with two hundred and five million. Uh, that movie is a very dark and has yeah. very mature subjects. It's yeah. not something I think like parents would take their kids to. So the no. fact that it made that kind of money just shows you like the older, more sophisticated audience. I guess you would say wanted to go see an entertaining film. Well, the um, uh, you know one surprised everybody. Yeah, it, it was well, fantastic. It surprised everybody, and I think they they doubled this up. And I mean, I think the third one you might not even see humans in it. That would be actually really cool. You know, just apes maybe like hanging out and uh, you yeah, know, the watching. Schmoes. The Schmoes actually had Rise of the Apes as the number one film that year. And who knows? Don of the Apes might do the same thing. It's uh, it's quite possible, man. It's quite possible. All right, guys. Uh, that's basically yeah. going to do it for our show today. The very yeah. first episode of Box Office Breakdown. Yep. Uh, we want to give another plug out to Box Office Mojo where we get all these numbers and a lot of these facts. If they're not Finstock's facts, they're probably come from Box Office Mojo. Yeah, if they ain't Finstock's or uh, Box Office Mojo, then they ain't true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I Be sure to subscribe on YouTube iTunes, leave comments, give that five star rating because we deserve it. I think absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to be too confident, but uh, we deserve it. Absolutely, you know people people should watch, and uh, it's only going to get better from here. And Finstock, where can they follow you on Twitter? Uh, at Bob Finstock uh, on Twitter, and you could find me on Facebook or whatever under my real name, but I'm not going to tell you that. You could find it if you want to. All right, a little scavenger hunt for you listeners out yeah. there and viewers. I am at Schmoes JTE. You can also find me on Facebook under the same thing. Actually, it's Josh, a.k.a. JTE, but put in JTE. There's not too many of us out there. Uh, all right, guys, this is a great... I think we had a successful, very first successful show. I, I, I totally agree with you. I can't wait to do this every week. Yep. Thank you so much for tuning in to Schmozo Network. We have so many great shows. Profiles, The Jedi Alliance, Meet Love the Movie show. Press. Yep. I mean... Guilty the, Pleasures the main with Josh show, McCubbin, Guilty Steve Pleasures. Simone. I love Guilty Pleasures. Oh, it's a great and show. I'm also engineering most of these shows, if not all of them. So, all right, guys, tune in. Thanks you so much, and we will see you next week. Keep watching those numbers. Poof. For producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew, we would like to thank you for listening to Box Office Breakdown. Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in stores now. To watch or listen to other Schmoes No Network episodes, get movie news, and join the conversation, be sure to visit schmoesno.com. And don't forget to rate and review this show on iTunes. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of Schmoes No.